Hey guys, I am so glad to be back. I just had a baby eight, nine weeks ago, so it's been super fun, super awesome. I'm gonna be doing a birth video, which I know is weird for this channel, but it's really redemptive and I just want people to see how beautiful birth is and it's not gonna be graphic or anything like that, but I do wanna talk about my home birth and how wonderful it was. So if you're into that, that's going to be coming up, but and I have some a fun one with my sister coming up and stuff like that. But today I wanted to talk to you just about something that's been burning in my heart and I hope that it will be a blessing and give glory to God because that's the only reason we should exist. And I really hope you guys are doing well. I know that it's a challenging, um, it, it's a challenging time. I don't want to say hard because I feel like hard, there's no like out to hard. Challenging at least gives you like, it's a challenge which means there's a solution when people are just like, yeah, it's been hard. It's just like, just eh just hard. But challenging is a good thing. It makes you grow. So I know we're living in some challenging but certain times. So I hope you all are doing well and you're finding joy in your everyday life with Jesus. I kind of just want to talk about belief really fast and I hope this is encouraging because all my videos I hope are happy. Some of them maybe not but that's okay. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm just gonna take it back. A Last year I prayed for a little boy who had cancer and he did end up passing away. It was really sad, honestly. I just, ugh, I hate, I just hate death and especially in kids and especially with, with illnesses. It's just, it's just wrong. It's an injustice and it just burns in me. It's just, it's just wrong. So I was feeling pretty down about the fact that he passed away and I was driving in the car talking to, you know, my husband about it. and. We were kind of trying to like make it not my fault because technically I guess it wasn't my fault or was it? And that's really what this video is about. So we're like, it's not your fault and you know, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, why? I asked him this. I turned to him and I was like, why shouldn't I take responsibility for this little boy's death? And I know, don't, don't just hang in there with me. You'll understand. I was like, why shouldn't I take responsibility for this little boy's death? Because I was there. I know the healer. I know he heals today. And I prayed for him. Like, I was there. So why shouldn't I take responsibility for my unbelief? Which is, that is really what this comes down to. And Tim was like, you know, oh, well, I guess, you know, if we are looking at it that way. And I was like, we need to look at it that way. We need to allow conviction, not condemnation, conviction to burn and push us. It That's what conviction does. It propels us deeper into relationship. I was like, if I had been in full persuasion belief that this boy would be healed, I have no doubt that he would be healed because if Jesus had walked into that room and said the same words I said, he would be healed because of Jesus' faith, Jesus' belief. Like he was so in one in tune with the Father that he only did and said what the father was doing. And so the father's will is to heal. The Bible says, the Bible says that it is not his will for any to perish. So we know that his will is healing because diseases kill people. And if he doesn't want people to perish, then he wants them to be well. I watched a Dan Muller video and it really just, uh, just helped me give me perspective to this whole thing. And it was, he was talking about the scripture where it says, the great commission, um, these signs will follow those that believe and the first one is healing. And he said, so if you're not seeing healing or you're not praying for people, you're not even praying for the sick, then you don't believe. He's like, it's not that you don't believe that God can heal or that God's in, or that God's sovereign and that Jesus died for healing. It's not that you don't believe that. It's that you personally don't believe that you can see those things in your life. And I was like, oh, it hurts, but it's so good. It hurts, but it's so good. And so I've been like really wanting to fast, but I'm breastfeeding so I can't really do that I can't I have to have calories to in order to produce for my child <laughs> and he was talking about when you fast you're not fasting to move God because God's already done it's finished he's already done what he's it's promised he would do it's literally on our end and the, what fasting does is fasting helps you see clearer so unbelief, the root of unbelief is that you're just not seeing clearly. You're not seeing clearly. And so you, you can't believe what you don't know. And so 
I was putting these all this stuff together and I was like, I need to get serious about this. I am tired of putzing. I've spent my last 30 years putzing and I have had this conviction that when I turn 30, like as I'm leading up to 30, I was like, Jesus's ministry started at 30 and it lasted three years. I can make up the time that I was a putz in a year if I give myself to God in the way that I know that I can and the way I'm excited for, the way that it burns inside of me. If the church doesn't take responsibility for their shortcomings, then where will the conviction come from to propel us deeper into relationship with Jesus? Where will the conviction come from to compel us and propel us deeper into unity with God? If we don't take responsibility, if we make excuses, like I could walk, I could walk out of that, even today I could say, well, I didn't really have authority in the situation. You know, the mom was there and um, the grandparents and, you know, it really wasn't my authority because it wasn't my son. Or I could say, well, there was unbelief in the room, which is such a stupid thing. I hate that so much. Ugh. Or, you know, I could have come up with so many excuses to put this blame of this failing on someone else. Here's what I know. Jesus never turned away anybody. And if people had faith, he commended them for their faith so that they knew that their faith mattered and their faith made a difference. And he also prayed for people who had no faith. Some um, were dead. So I don't know how they could have faith because they were dead. So he shows us, number one, that your faith, man, it moves mountains and that you don't always need people to pray for you. Your faith can bring you where you need to be. And he also showed us that when you don't have faith, other people can be relied on who do have faith, who who do have the belief for the situation. So guys, there's really no excuse. <laughs> so if you have faith, then what do we need to do? We need to get faith. We need to, number one, get rid of unbelief. And fasting is how we can do that. In 2018, God gave me a word, a specific word, he said, I was reading Adamant by Lisa Bevere, and it was the hate chapter, Adamant, um, Adamant about hate or something like that. It's so good. I would read the book. And the Lord told me specifically, he said, in April, if you want to bring life, stop entertaining yourself with death. So for two years, I really adhered to that. And I'm not going to share like how I do it in my daily walk because everybody, everybody's different. I don't want to start controversy or like you should be doing this. Uh, this was specific to me. So I, I lived that for two years. After I had uh, Juliet, I was really confined to the bed, to the, my room, to the house, you know, and I was on my phone a lot. And I started following some YouTubers that would not be under the category of life. And I had a dream. And in my dream, these two YouTubers come out and the one turns to the other and, and tells them that they're gonna read my aura because I'm in the dream. And I instantly, they turned to me to go to speak to me and I just felt this demonic presence. And it was like that terror um, and heat. But I, I let myself feel the fear instead of like knowing it was demon and being like, what do you have to do with me? You're a demon, defeated, go away. I let the fear like <gasps> in my dream and they went to speak and I tried to say Jesus out of fear. I was like, and it couldn't come out. Like the name of Jesus couldn't come out. And so they, they had red eyes and they were turning to me and this demon was going to speak about my aura, which was just random. And I turn, I just start turning away from them. And I'm saying Jesus, but now I'm saying it in a, in a, in a calm way, in a, in a peaceful way, like Jesus, Jesus. And I turn my back on these YouTubers and I put my hands up. And I just keep saying Jesus. And that's how I woke up. So later I was in the shower and I was like, Lord, I turned my back on what I've been doing that was disobedient to the word you gave me. And I'm recommitting. I am recommitting to what you told me in 2018. I'm tired of being a putz. I'm tired of making excuses for inaction. I am tired of being a hypocrite. I, like literally, I'm just like, I am done. Like I know what you can do through me and that is what i want out of this life i don't know how much time i have left i don't know if it's 40 50 70 i don't care honestly how much time i have left because you only have today and so we have to get rid of and uproot unbelief today so that we can have the impact that we are meant to have in our daily lives 
I was thinking, I always talk about this, I always talk to him, I don't have a skill, I don't really have a skill, like I'm not really great at like one thing, I don't have anything that's really marketable, like I write and all these things, but I've never really felt like I have like, this is my thing, like yeah, this is it, and one day it just hit me that the gospel is my thing, so I wrote down on my board, I wrote down, I wrote down the gospel is my career, the gospel is my skill. That is what I want. And I'm not talking about career, like a paid career. Like I don't want to be a traveling person. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't need to be known to have a career for the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care if anybody knows because the gospel is not about being known. It's about Jesus being known. And so I was like, that's my career. The gospel is my career. The gospel is my skill. That is what I want out of life. And I am going to take responsibility for my shortcomings, not in, a con not in a condemning way, but in conviction that burns and pushes me closer to Jesus where I see, wow, I did not see clear in this area because if I had, then something would have changed. And so that's where I'm at. And I wanna encourage you guys to take responsibility. Take responsibility, let it burn inside of you. Not, don't beat yourself up, but let it burn. There's a difference. The conviction of the Holy Spirit reminds you who you are and who he is. And that's like, that's a fire inside of you. Like, you know the song, there's a fire shut up in my bones. I want the world to know that you are God. That is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's just, it pushes you to change. But if you don't allow yourself to take responsibility, then you won't change. Instead, you will make excuses for where you are, for where you've been. Well, it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this person, it's because of that person. You always put the blame on other people instead of just being like, no. I am responsible for how united I am to the Trinity. I am responsible. And so if I see shortcomings, that is my fault. It's not my pastor's fault. It's not my youth leader's fault. It's not my mom's fault. It's not my dad's fault. It's not my brother's fault. It's not my cousin's fault for what they did to me when I was a child. Like it is, it is your responsibility. And so I just, I just hope this is encouraging. It feels encouraging, but I always say it feels encouraging, but sometimes I wonder if it's received as encouraging. I don't know, but God is so good and he wants to take us so far in him. As far as, as we wanna go, he will take us. I don't want to be in front of a dying child ever again and not see some kind of change. That doesn't mean that that won't happen but that's my goal my goal is not to see faithless prayers being prayed over dying children or hurting people my desire is to see burning faith prayers that create change because the belief is like I just see like a pillar like the belief is a pillar it's immovable there is no other option but what the Bible says and the will of God is that none should perish and if that's the will of God, then I will do the will of God on earth too. And if I need to fast, I'm, I, we need to fast. I want to fast. Like when I fasted in my own way because I couldn't eat, and literally in two days I had clarity over, over a, like a big portion of my life in the direction to go in. Like it was amazing. And so I encourage you guys, fast. Get rid of unbelief. Fasting is not about moving God. Fasting is about seeing clearly and, and, and stepping deeper into relationship with him. I encourage you to just go after Jesus with everything inside of you because God loves you. God loves you so much. And if Jesus being sent, dying, and resurrected was the only thing God ever did for you, that would be enough. And so I pray you have a revelation of what it means to be loved by God. I pray you have a revelation of what it means to love Him. And I pray that you walk out your full potential in Christ on a daily basis and that your career becomes the gospel too. And I love you guys and I'm thinking about you and I know and I know and I know and I know that if you would just relinquish your will to the Father, that this season it's going to be the best season and you're going to keep saying that for every season after that <laughs> i love you guys i will see you in the next video bye you've got a friend in me you've got a friend in me when the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from me 
nice warm bed. 